Uh, Portsmouth in the process of becoming the first Premier League club to go into administration. <laughs> Portsmouth football fans have been left in a state of shock after manager Harry Redknapp quit at the weekend. As last week, the administrator said they had to remove every player from the club's wage bill or go bust. Who's going to win? Portsmouth Football Club were founded in 1898 by a bunch of founders, including John Brickwood. Portsmouth FC succeeded a bunch of predecessor clubs, including Portsmouth AFC, who once had Sir Arthur Conan Doyle playing as in the books as a goalkeeper. In 1910, Portsmouth adopted the famous blue shirt and red socks combo, which would stay tradition for over a hundred years. In 1927, Portsmouth were promoted to the first team for the first time in their history, and along with that, they reached two FA Cup finals before finally winning the trophy in 1939 after beating Wolverhampton Wanderers 4-1 in what was one of the most shocking results in the FA Cup history. Due to World War II, Portsmouth held the trophy for seven years and in 1949 and 1950, Portsmouth won Division 1 back to back with the likes of Jimmy Dickinson, Len Phillips and Peter Harris. However, this would be the last ever time Portsmouth would win a Division 1 trophy. Due to poor form, the club slid into the fourth tier before rising back up again and then the financial problems arose. Portsmouth are a football club steep with financial turmoil. The earliest problems arising back in 1910. In 1998, the club entered administration, however, was saved by Milan Mandarich. In that time, Portsmouth saw promotion to the Premier League. However, Mandarich's funds began to dry up and the club was eventually sold to Gardamac after £60 million in debt. Gardamac completely changed the structure of the football club, bringing in players like David James, Sol Campbell, and an ageing Andy Colt in the first transfer window. Under Gader Max's ownership, Portsmouth won the FA Cup in 2008 with a late goal from Cardiff against Cardiff. This squad featured Premier League invincibles, FA Cup finalists, Champions League winners. I right, calm down, lads. One of them was Jimmy Traore. However, just after the FA Cup, the stock market crashed, meaning that Gader Max lost most of his funds and had to sell Portsmouth FC. This was sold to Soliman Al Fahim in a £70 million deal. Gardamac only received £2 million of the original fee, putting Al Fahim's finance into question. After this, the club was sold to Ali Al Faraj. However, his money was not as much as he claimed, and Balram Chanroy, who funded the move for Al Faraj, took over the club and straight away put Portsmouth into administration. This was the first time a Premier League team was ever put into administration and they were deducted 10 points, being relegated from the Premier League that season. In 2011-12, Portsmouth Football Club were taken over by Vladimir Antonov and things started to look alright with a decent start to the season. However, in late 2011, Vladimir Antonov was arrested due to fraud after he illegally stripped the Lithuanian bank. However, this put the club into administration and they were dug 10 points due to this. However, this did not stop Portsmouth getting a historic 2-2 draw against Southampton with David Norris scoring a late equaliser. Portsmouth were sadly relegated that season due to the point deduction and in 2012-13, Portsmouth's entire playing staff left the club due to not being paid in months. On August the 9th, however, Portsmouth Football Club was saved with just a few hours to spare. I, mean, I remember my first game, I was seven years old, it's 1999. Um, it was Torquay in the League Cup, so it wasn't exactly a glamour fixture. But ever since, ever since you walk up those steps, so I remember it down the North Stand, you walk up the steps, you look out over Fratton Park, and that's it, you're hooked. Um, and I think it's the, that football club means an awful lot. I mean, it's something that is within my family. Um, you know, it's friends, you know, coming from the area, everyone supports Portsmouth, it's our local side. Um, and I think without it, I think that would leave a, a major hole in the community and, you know, people in this area's lives. If Portsmouth were liquidated, how would that impact your life? I think it would have had a, a major impact on my life. If, uh, my football club have been liquidated. I mean, uh, I know for a lot of people, for myself included, you look forward to, you know, Saturday afternoon, three o'clock, to go and watch your side. You know, you pay a lot of money and you do a lot of time and effort to travel 
around the country to watch them, if that suddenly gets taken away from you, that's going to have a major impact to me for a lot of people. They're football clubs. You know, it's been passed down to them from you know generations, so it's something that's in the family. If that disappears, I think that'll have a major impact on, on an individual's life. Did you ever feel anger toward the EFL for not giving background checks? Um, I think both the EFL and the and the FA and the Premier League as well are all culpable in what happened to Portsmouth Football Club. Um, there was no regulation of any of the owners. Um, you know, these are people who have since been jailed for things like international fraud, and now have been. In, you know, one of them was even involved in the Angolan civil war. I mean, these can't be good guys who are doing things for the right reasons and investing in a football club for to see it grow. These are people looking to make a quick buck. Um, and you know the fans, the people who copy it at the end of the day, they're the ones that stick by the club, um, and I think they have every right to be angry at, the, at football governance for allowing this to happen. How much do fans mean to football clubs nowadays? I think things are changing in football. The higher you go up the football pyramid, I think it is they're just another number on a spreadsheet. They're not fans; they're customers to Premier League sides. I think the lower you go down the pyramid, the more the fans are the lifeblood of the club and they're the, the people that keep the club alive. Um, you know, volunteers, you know, getting people through the gate is, you know, a big part of, you know, a club's income. Um, so I think the lower down the pyramid, the fans are absolutely crucial. You know, without them, the club wouldn't exist. Following the takeover of Portsmouth FC, Portsmouth were given a 10 point deduction, which was very controversial, as you know, it wasn't well deserved. Portsmouth were relegated at the end of the 2012 13 season after finishing rock bottom after going through a winless run of 22 games. In League 2, things didn't get much better despite the new ownership. The first couple of years they struggled, and even under Richie Barker, the club found themselves on the brink of relegation to the conference, the fifth tier of English football. This led to the club to appoint Paul Cook from Chesterfield. Under his stewardship in the first season, they got a playoff semi-final where they were cruelly beaten uh, in the last minute by Plymouth Argyle. And the second season was very memorable. On the last day of the season, Portsmouth won 6-1 against Cheltenham to win the league title, where they were only on top of the league for half an hour that entire season. This promotion winning campaign gathered attention from American investment group Tornante, headed by Mike Eisner. In May 2017, the PST Trust had a meeting to decide what was going to happen and they decided to sell up. The takeover was completed in August 2017 and the club was officially Isers. In their first season they finished 8th in League 1 and under Kenny Jacket after Paul Cook left for Wigan Athletic. The second season under Kenny Jacket was a lot more memorable being top of the league in December 2018. However, everything fell apart and he ended up finishing 4th in League 1, losing on the playoffs to Sunday. However, there was a very special day when Portsmouth in March 31st, 2019 won uh... So why is this small trophy so triumphant, you may ask? Well, it shows how much community spirit can mean to a football club, and it shows there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Regarding the EFL, more needs to be done within owner checks and proof of funds. In the last few months, we've had Berry go extinct and kicked out of the EFL, along with Bolton Wanderers almost going through the same route. But the EFL must also learn not to punish teams in these horrible situations, as it makes the situation ten times worse. And this is the story of Portsmouth FC. Football Club are promoted to League One. It's taken four long years. There's been heartbreak, there's been devastation, but now there's joy, there's pride. Pompey are promoted, and as Blues fans swarm onto the pitch, Pompey will be playing in League One next season. I, I remember when I was in, in the Premier League, and such a small stadium, <laughs> the atmosphere was absolutely. Incredible. A lot of people say about the round fans and how good they 
here, but these are something else down here. I've never known fans like it in my career. Fatten Park and the boys are having fun. Well, football time, get the time, get the time, from here we come. Cause we got a team, know what I mean, we'll follow them till the end. Roar, roar, that's what we're for, down at the Fretting. Cause Pompey, 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 you're the team. Pompey, 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 you're the green. Pompey, you're the greatest, and we'll keep following you. Yeah, we'll keep following Pompey, following the boys in blue. We'll keep following Bombay, following the boys.